welcome back guys and girls uh, this is going to be another house of lasers review this time we're going to do the thunder laser uh, i have the nova 51 and quick disclaimer uh, i am a small part of their tech support team um, but i'm going to give this review as a person that researched uh, the, the best possible and most forward thinking laser company around um, that had the most options for the money and this is what i came up with and um, somehow i ended up on their team uh, but regardless of that uh, this is a unbiased opinion of of their machine and and what it could do for you um, it is an impressive uh, tank that um, continues to uh, just perform every day flawlessly. So let's get right into it and, and go over some of the aspects of this machine. So let's start out with the, uh, the rotary. Um, if you decide to, to purchase the rotary option from them, you are getting the Roto Boss, which is the best rotary on the market. They're not sending you some cheap aluminum brick um, that doesn't align correctly and has no holds and and have you know it's aluminum on aluminum and and it's just um and the rotor boss is the best rotary tool out there and that is their stock their standard rotary tool uh, not only that there is no unplugging or switching when you plug this rotary in you plug it in and it has its own built-in driver so it Unlike a lot of the other machines where you have to either unplug a stepper motor and plug a plug your rotary in or you have to flip a switch that deactivates the um, one of the stepper motors. This one actually has its own built in stepper driver and um, that's very helpful. I mean, there's no, like I said, pulling plugs in and out um, or switches to go bad. So it's just one more thing that you don't have to worry about. Uh, coming along these massive one and a half inch rails, um, you can take a look at the belt system and the gearing system. Uh, it's just, it, it is a beast. Everything is very thick aluminum, uh, thicker than anything I've seen on any machine out there. Uh, it is built as an industrial machine. Looking at these rollers, these are a completely different design than I've ever seen as well. And it's a low maintenance, um, a lot less things to go wrong than the linear ball bearing style where you constantly have to keep it lubed. Um, these are occasional lube and um, basically wipe them down uh, when they have a little bit of debris on them. And otherwise, these, are, these things are so true. There's not a lot of play. It's impossible for it to wiggle and move just because these wheels are compressing down on those rail guides. This machine has an IR um, autofocus. So there is a focus beam on each side that as soon as the material breaks the plane, um, almost like a garage door when you try to run through it you know you get stuck uh, door stops same thing with this uh, once the material crosses that beam it will stop and let you know that you are within focus there's this little sensor underneath the laser head which is a flame up uh, fire stop so if you ever have flame up and the machine notices it will alert you. It will stop all work. It will beep violently and let you know that something is absolutely wrong and you need to take care of it. Coming over here, we have dual air assist. And, and why is dual air assist uh, uh, important? Well, when we're engraving, we don't necessarily need a lot of PSI. We don't need a lot of air, and we just want enough air to keep the lens cool, the lens clean, and uh, kind of push around the debris a little bit of whatever we're engraving. But when we're cutting, we want a good amount of air pressure, you know, between 30, 60 PSI to help us keep a clean cut and push through the material. 
Well, while in Lightburn, if you have Air Assist selected, it triggers the solenoid for um, high volume Air Assist. If you have Air Assist off, then it's always going to be the lower volume and they're completely controllable. So um, you have a little bit, you have a little read um, switch on there that you can go up and down on. So it's a, basically a proportioning valve where you can adjust the amount of air that you want on either the high or the low side. Looking at the side of the machine, there's lots of easy access points um, and everything is done so clean and neat on this machine. Um, right there you have the tubes going to the chiller and going up to the tube. And then over here we have our Z-table motor and also our two solenoids for our high and low pressure for the air assist. But look, I mean, everything is run through cable management. Um, everything is labeled cleanly and um, really it's, you know, being an X 12 volt installer and working with wiring for a good portion of my life, I'm impressed with with the detail and the OCD that went into um, keeping this easy to use and easy to repair. Um, very clean, you know, like I said, labeled and easy to trace something if something was to go wrong. Looking at the back of the machine, it, once again, we have thick pieces of anodized aluminum um, adjustments everywhere so that if anything is out of whack you can completely adjust it you're not limited here this is uh, they've thought well in advance of, of how to um, make sure that you know if you replace a tube you have you know these these up and down aluminum um, adjustments to make sure you level it out and uh, bring everything back into alignment um, very impressive uh, it, just these aluminum holders are the best that I've seen on the market. Now each each tube is tested and they have to meet a requirement uh, to be, I believe it's 15%, 10 or 15% over what they say it will produce. So if it's a 100 watt tube, it needs to produce somewhere in between 10 to 15% more. Um, and that's the only way that that tube qualifies for being in a Thunder Laser. Um, the power supply is matched to the tube and it's not some cheap little power supply. It is a good quality power supply. Over here we have our pass-through door. Um, this to me uh, is great, it's usable, but I would love to see it bigger. They have the area to work with. I don't understand why they wouldn't take advantage of it. Um, when we get back to the front, I will explain my thoughts of how this machine could be laid out just a little bit better to take advantage of larger objects and, and passing through of uh, maybe a little bit thicker material. The Thunder machines come standard with a chiller. This one comes with the CW5000. Um, this is not just a water pump. This is actually chilling the water, keeping your tube at a consistent temperature for the most accurate and consistent engraving and cutting possible. They have nice, clean, quick connects. And on the, new, uh, the newer versions of this machine, I do believe that everything is triggered by the machine. So currently we have to turn on the, the chiller uh, before we get started. And uh, on the new ones, it will automatically turn on with the machine. Now, of course, we have our typical switch panel with our ethernet, our USB stick, and our, our PC connections. And this is all standard stuff, um, but this is where things get really cool. If you look inside this and look at the wiring and the layout and how clean it is, I have never seen a machine built like this that costs this amount of money. Um, maybe the higher end, machines you'll see this detail but this is pretty impressive uh, the board down there on the bottom in between the controller on the left the white controller on the left and the black box right underneath the black box is a, a tl timer and what that's taking care of is setting a time for your air assist to stay on or turn on 
and also your exhaust fan. So if you're working with something nasty like an ABS plastic um, and you want the, the air to stay on maybe five to 10 minutes longer than, than the machine, you can set it to do that. Completely adjustable, you tell it what to do, um, no turning the fan on and off, it's all automatic once you start your job. The amount of circuit breakers and um, and solenoids to turn things on and off is impressive, along with all of the labels that follow throughout the machine. So if anything was to ever go bad, you can easily trace these via the numbers on the wires, which I don't know if anybody's ever had any issues with theirs and trying to get schematics from somebody. Um, you don't have to do that here. It's done. It is easy to trace and um, easy to fix. Again, all of the wire going into cable management. So, you know, if you're cleaning it or something like that, there's nothing to get stuck on. Um, you know, if you're vacuuming it out, everything is moved to the side, put into cable management and up and out of the way, clean. Coming back around to the front of the machine, we have almost a 40 millimeter, uh, switch it over to inches, uh, a 1.5 inch rail system. Um, these are thick rails. These are the thickest rails I've seen on, and it's almost two inches tall. So the rail supports and guideways are huge. Uh, they are thick and heavy duty, um, along with the belts. You know, there's your Roto Boss, which is uh, a beast of a rotary machine. But the belts, even the belts are uh, over a half an inch thick. I mentioned earlier about the thickness of the metals. Uh, this plate for the head mount is almost a half an inch thick. So you're getting good quality, not, there's no cheap knockoff stuff in this machine. This is thought out from head to toe um, and, and using the best materials possible. And again, this, this machine at 51 by 36 inches, a uh, hundred watt machine is $10,000. And the list of stuff that you're getting for that $10,000 is not a short list. And we'll go over that list here in a second, but back to the thickness of the materials, uh, the thicker aluminum, the thicker belts, the heavier duty, rails that go across and also the roller style rails as opposed to the linear ball bearing drives. Um, this is all matched components to get the best performance out of the machine. So looking at the list of components that you're getting with, you know, for that $10,000 for this machine, which would be a hundred watt 51 by 36 inch Nova series, uh, water chiller, air assist, exhaust, uh, two inch head, uh, light burn license, a small tool kit, cleaning kit, your honeycomb and knife bed, your pass through door, alarm lamp, uh, the smart board controller that, that tells the air assist and the uh, exhaust fan to turn on, your red dot, you have autofocus. Uh, they don't mention that um, it does have the fire uh, shutdown, the dual air assist, you know, and those of you that are using this to its max, those those are important things. And for safety reasons, the the flame up, uh, shutdown, and alert system is is huge, and it saved my rear end twice already. And on on top of those other things, you're getting lifetime tech support. Uh, you are getting an hour of remote setup training included and we have optional training available for an extra cost. Here are a couple of things that I'd like to see improved upon. Um, getting the mirror, the third mirror out, the downward facing mirror, it's difficult because these adjustment screws are so large and heavy duty uh, that it's somebody who has sausage fingers like me, it's, it's difficult to get in there and, and get that out easily. Um, so some type of maybe a little bit taller uh, ring that holds it in to, to get it out easier would be wonderful in my opinion. 
But just looking at the, the setup on the laser head, it is completely industrial in its build quality and metal thickness. My next area where I think they can improve is this bar that runs right across here, this white bar. Um, so you have your vent panel up top and then you have your access to your lower panel through the door that's down right now. Um, I, I don't see that being needed structurally. I actually cut it out. I was having a hard time focusing using my four inch lens because of that bar. Um, there's probably a few other ways around it, but if I'm working with a large piece, um, I want to be able to move that up and down freely and take advantage of my Z table. Removing that has given me a little bit more access and I searched the entire machine to see structurally what this would impact. Uh, I don't see anything. You can still close it up completely. Down below, we are missing a collection tray, which they have added to the new models. Uh, I believe that they all come with the new collection tray, and I'll, I'll probably be retrofitting this one, to, you know, and building my own. Um, I just don't want that debris sitting down on the bottom. Um, other than that, uh, you know, I can, I can see them giving you a little bit more depth to the Z table. There's a lot of space underneath. Um, otherwise, this machine is really built like a tank, and as you can see, the detail and the level of OCD that went into putting this together and organizing it and keeping things clean and hidden and traceable uh, is something that you need in the field. Um, in some of my other companies, we use heavy equipment, and everything is field replaceable. Easy access, easy removal. Um, and this is, in my opinion, a level up from other machines that I've owned because everything is so easily traceable and fixable. Um, it, it, you know, just from the standpoint of the thickness materials or the thicker materials, it, it is an industrial unit built for a lifetime of service. And, um, you couldn't ask for anything more for that price point. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we've got more videos coming weekly. We appreciate you being part of House of Lasers. Thanks.